Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I wanted to shoot this hopefully quick video for those people wondering how do you vacuum seal powdery goods into jars and can you vacuum seal cocoa or powdered milk or flour or anything like that? And the answer is yes, you can. There is just a special trick to it and we're gonna get to that. So what I have here, I just shot a video on some of my new uh, food storage products that I'm stocking up on. And this all these are all actually dairy forms. Uh, so I've got buttermilk, I've got white cheddar powder, I've got heavy cream powder, and I've got some real butter powder, which is quite interesting. So once you open your packages like this, or if you're just simply wanting to get it out of a plastic container like this, and get it into a jar because it's just a little healthier then uh and then once you open it they the i just think for it to keep their freshness it's better to go ahead and seal it into a jar instead and so what you got to do is make sure that whatever jar whether you, you can use a regular mouth or wide mouth whichever one you prefer make sure you got a good canning funnel to put on top of there so that you make less of a mess but if you're me you'll probably still make a mess anyway you just simply carefully dump your powder into your jar like i'm doing here Shake it down real good. Obviously, that part was pretty would be pretty simple to figure out. Now, here's a little trick that you got to know before you vacuum seal or attempt to vacuum seal the powdery ingredients is take either a piece of cotton cloth. Uh, it, it can look pretty. It can be plain. It can be a piece of paper towel or even a coffee filter and simply place that on top, trying to either tuck it around the powder ingredients or just at least bunch it around the top as best as you can, just making sure that the fabric doesn't stick up above the rim of the jar at all. That's going to be important because you're going to want to put your lid on top of there. You don't want anything sticking out. You want to make sure this is all clean. And though I have a new lid here, typically I only use recycled lids, ones that I've already canned with. This one was just handy and I wanted to get this video done. So. Uh, actually lids that have already been used for pressure canning or water bath canning tend to work better oftentimes than the brand new lids when it comes to vacuum sealing. So anyway, putting a piece, some kind of barrier between your powdery ingredients and the lid itself, what's that, what that's going to do is while it's vacuum sealing, that powder can get pulled up and come up between the top of the jar and the lid itself and that's going to prevent it from getting a good seal so having some kind of barrier there keeps that from happening so that you can be more guaranteed to get a good seal so in this case i'm using the food saver top you can use your food saver machine or you can use your brake bleeder pump like i'm going to do here i insert the tip in there for if you're using the pump and not the food saver hose that has its special fitting you want to press and hold it in place where the one that where the food saver one just snaps in there some people actually take the two hoses like the hose from the food saver attachment and then their brake bleeder hose and just kind of jam them together so that they don't have to hold this in place that's one way you can do it but if you're not going to go that route just press it in firmly it doesn't have to be really hard but firmly hold in place and then just pump your brake bleeder up until the needle stops moving i used to give numbers but it may differ for each brake bleeder pump or for what you're sealing and i find that as long as i pump it until the needle stops moving i can get a really good seal and i'm more guaranteed to get a good seal and especially if your brake bleeder is old your pump is old like mine is and the calibration is off it can be hard to know exactly what to pump it to so just keep pumping until it stops moving which in this case sometimes it stops moving a lot sooner but in this case is right there and then i pull that out and it should be well sealed there we go so I just want to make sure I put on top that this is buttermilk powder and then the date that I put it in there. That way you can keep track of how old it is. 
And then I do still recommend putting the band on. You don't have to. I've had some vacuum sealed stuff that I don't bother putting bands on like some coconut, even using Tatler lids and they're still sealed. That's a question I get a lot too is can I use Tatler lids? Yes, you can. I find the metal lids though, I have less failure rates later on than I do with the Tatlers. But like I said, I have some coconut that I've had put up since 2014 that is still good now speaking of 2014 the other day we had a family get together out at the property a rain country retreat and if you're curious i'll go ahead and link to a video that i'd more recently shot on our little piece of property that we bought over a year ago anyway uh so we had a some family come from out of town and i decided instead of making a pie or two like i normally do i decided i wanted to make my cowboy cookies which i have a recipe on that which i will link to in the description box below and by the way don't forget to click on either show more or that little gray arrow if you're on a smart device to open up the description box anyway so i have had these chocolate chips since 2014 so i stocked up on these these are organic soy free non-gmo chocolate chips they're called equal exchange and so they're a fair trade product and when i saw them on sale in town at a health food store they were a really good price i stocked up on a lot of them so that was back in 2014 and then vacuum sealed each bag into a jar like this so your chocolate can keep for a very 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 long time so this is six years old still good cookies turned out great here's a picture of them right here the cowboy cookies and again don't forget you can check out my recipe to those in the description box down below okay so yeah so just know that besides powder ingredients there's many things you can vacuum seal that will last for many years certain nuts will also vacuum seal nicely into jars put on a shelf without the need to freeze some you need to freeze like brazil nuts and uh, macadamia nuts i recommend freezing those but sliced almonds whole almonds never had any issues with those vacuum sealing them into jars and putting them up for years to come so there you go that's how you do the powders and if you're interested in my video about these i'll go ahead and link to that down below i'll have several more videos that would apply more directly to this that and, and related to food storage such as vacuum sealing into jars some items to think of and just the the food storage beyond rice and beans is one that um, i cover quite a few different things so i'm going to link to quite a few videos for those who are getting new into food storage and want some more ideas on what to put up and how okay well i hope this helped to answer some questions i get quite frequently about vacuum sealing or storing powders into jars and how you do it all right well thanks for watching take care and god bless